So you're taking a look at a used Kia Telluride and you want to know, you already know it's Motor Trend's new sport utility of the year, but is it a great pre-owned buy? Is the quality, the kind of quality that will stand up to the rigors that a four-wheel drive family vehicle has to deal with? Is this something that's going to last? Because it has that great warranty for the first owner, but for the second owner, you lose a big chunk of that warranty. And you want to know if this car with amazing resale value as it has is still a good deal on the pre-owned market or maybe you should just wait if uh, there's still a list going on in your neighborhood to get one of these new. Maybe it's a better deal to wait for one new. Well, we're taking a look at a 10,000 mile, one year old 2020 Kia Telluride SX. This is a prestige package with every single option that you can get. And so by the end of this, you're gonna know one way or the other if a pre-owned Kia Telluride is the right sport utility for you. Now, hello guys, my name is Joe Tunney and I'm here visiting my friends at BMW of Hawaii. They've taken in this great 10,000 mile 2020 Kia Telluride. And we're gonna start taking a look at this by popping a hood. Now, one thing you're gonna know about the Kia Telluride is it's not extremely powerful compared to some of the competition. This is a 3.8 liter six cylinder Kia motor that gets 291 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. Well, neither of those numbers is really all that big. It goes from zero to 60 in about seven seconds. Well, that's kind of fast, but it's not as fast as the other vehicles in the competition for your third row family vehicle dollar. This does have some pretty neat features though that I think you're gonna realize that maybe that slightly decompressed engine might ultimately be a good thing and not a bad thing. Let's take a look around. Now, one thing you'll notice about the Telluride right out of the get-go is the front end. Most trucks, most big chunky uh, sport utilities are very proud of the fact of their truck underpinnings, where although this is quite chunky like a Toyota Land Cruiser is, it's actually a front wheel drive platform. Front wheel drive platforms typically have a lot of what they call overhang, where the body kind of sticks out a little bit unnecessarily in the front. And so if this car had the big proud headlight and bumper treatment that a traditional truck base SUV has, it might look a little bit silly. So what Kia did was they actually pulled this overhang back. And so from a stylistic standpoint, this is actually a pretty sophisticated undertaking that they did. And it really makes the front end of this car look very impressive. This doesn't look like a front wheel drive based sport utility a la a Honda CRV or a Toyota RAV4 or something like that. This looks like a purpose built sport utility, again, much like a Toyota Land Cruiser would be. Taking a look on the sides, now this is an SX model. So this is the top of the line. So right off the bat, you know that it has 20 inch wheels as opposed to 18 inch wheels. Also, all of these Tellurides have eight inches of ground clearance. That's actually pretty good for pretty much anything that you're gonna do. For most people in this segment, their off-road duties are gonna be going to that secret beach that nobody knows about or taking their family up to the mountains for skiing. Two things that the Telluride do, uh, is gonna do absolutely perfectly. Let's take a look inside. Now, everything reminds me of the most popular SUVs. Some of the buttons are a little bit rudimentary. Some of the details and fit and finishes aren't the first way that I would prefer to see them done. But overall, it's actually really nice and it's really nice looking and it feels, again, chunky and substantial. The chairs aren't that big. They're the kind of chairs that you would find in a car, not in a full-size sport utility. 
However, they're still very comfortable. Let's jump in back. Now, the second row is slidable frontwards and backwards. And so the, I have everything from not very much uh, leg room to tons and tons of leg room, but let's just put it in the middle. I'm actually quite comfortable. The headliner is an Alcantara type of headliner, and I'm a big fan of Alcantara type headliners. I think they just look really, really cool. But more important for me is this is an SX model with twin sunroofs. And so sunroofs always cut down the amount of available headroom. And in a car base for utility, that can actually be a bad thing. But I'm six feet tall, 180 pounds, and I actually have tons of headroom even in the middle row. Again, this is an SX. One of the nice features about the SX is that even in the middle row, if you look at the buttons here, it has both heated and air conditioned second row seats, as well as fabulous speakers for the Harman Kardon stereo system. Again, part of that SX package. Let's take a look at the third row. So one push of a button gets me back into the third row. And you'll notice there's actually pretty good room back here. I'm gonna pull the seat back to where I had it. Well, heck, this is actually as roomy as say the Honda Pilot. And the Honda Pilot to me is the gold standard of third row seats in these smaller type of SUVs. The difference with the Telluride compared to the Honda Pilot is that the Telluride has the feel of a full-size sport utility in a package that's sized very similarly to the Honda Pilot. Proportionally though, I think they actually do a better job with their interior than even the Honda Pilot does as per space. Let's take a look in the trunk. So getting in and out, not the end of the world. Opening up the trunk, well, that's simple, just a push of a button. So trunk space isn't all that giant. It's 21 cubic feet. It jumps up to over 80 cubic feet with these guys down. And so for trips to Costco, yeah, you have tons of space. If four of you are going up to the mountains, pretty much all of your gear can be inside. If six or seven of you are going up to the mountains, the skis are definitely going up above. Opening up here, just extra storage. These are winter type floor mats that are part of this particular car. Also part of this particular car, I'll close this. Just in the back here, you'll see it has a couple of the very few available options on a Telluride. One is all wheel drive. All wheel drive is a $2,000 option. The one big difference, uh, practically speaking, other than the benefits of all wheel drive is that with two wheel drive, with front wheel drive, the Telluride averages about 23 miles per gallon combined driving in the real world. With the all wheel drive, it averages 21 miles per gallon real world driving out in the combined open road and city driving. So that's something you're gonna need to weigh out. One thing you'll see here too is the rear toe receiver. When these uh, come with the car from the factory, it's a $750 option, but it also comes with automatic load leveling rear suspension. Now, this is a front wheel drive based car platform, not a truck platform. Front wheel drive based car platforms really don't tow very well most of the time. In this case, this will tow actually 5,000 pounds. So if you're buying a Telluride to take the boat to the lake, so to speak, even if you're taking it over the pass, you're actually in really good shape with the Telluride. Now, one thing about the Telluride is platform wise, it's actually the same vehicle as the Hyundai Palisade. However, the Telluride is actually a little bit bigger, especially inside than the Hyundai Palisade is. But either way, both of them are really nice. Stylistically, just the tiny bit of uh, dimensionality that's different between the Kia and the Hyundai, my personal taste, I actually like the Kia more than the Hyundai. Let's take a look inside.
Now, one thing you notice about the interior of this car is that it's very dude, which is kind of weird. That's the last thing I think I would ever think I would say about a Kia interior. But the seats feel like saddle type of leather, and they've got a kind of Wild West type of pattern to them. The wood, and I, you know, I know this is all wood applique, but it still looks chunky and nice. The shifter's cool. It's got the oh my god bars here if somebody's taking turns too too radically. Now, the leather I mentioned, it's like a saddle type leather. Because this is a fully loaded vehicle, this is the prestige package on top of being a, a, a an SX type of package. It has things like heads up display. It also has Napa leather. Napa, uh, for those of you who don't follow leather, and I hope there aren't too many of you that do, Napa leather actually gets its name from Napa in California, even though it's spelled N-A-P-P-A. -P -P uh, back in the 1850s, they used to do treat leather with salts and then use vegetable dyes, and so the leather would be tough yet soft, and the color would last a long time. And so that philosophy has been around forever and ever. So Napa leather is simply, you have the whole grain of leather, the whole skin from the top layer to the bottom, and then they use various salts to this day to, to tan them, so to speak, and various dyes that uh, let the color soak in and last forever and ever. Napa leather can actually last for decades. The counterpoint leather would be something like top grain leather. Top grain sounds like either something that's really good or maybe the top layer of leather. That's the opposite of the truth. Top grain leather means that the, the leather has some imperfections to it, so they've actually taken off the top of the leather itself and then made some artificial grain if that's the look that they're looking for. Well, a couple of problems with top grain leather. It doesn't hold the color forever. It's not as soft as real Napa leather is. It doesn't last as long as real Napa leather does. So when you get real Napa leather, you can actually use your fingers to tell. You can know right away real leather from kind of skinny leather, so to speak. This is nice. This is really, really nice. This is the kind of interior, you know, I'm not saying this is similar to $100,000 cars, but it's not that different. Let's see how it feels out on the open road. Now, a couple of quick observations. The first thing that my wife noticed when she got inside of the car, other than it's a really nice interior, is that the air conditioning doesn't get the car as cold as maybe a big Escalade or a big German sport utility. Again, that is the limitation of having a car-based platform and using a lot of car-based features in such a big vehicle. But we've been in the car for like a minute and a half and it's plenty cold and everything feels great. The other observation is the middle bucket seats. Some people prefer middle bucket seats. Some people prefer middle bench seat. We very, very much prefer middle bucket seats. When you have kids that are jostling with one another all the time, the, it's nice to have no touching game allowed. They get their own space, their own private luxury chair to relax in, and uh, everybody's doing their own thing. Makes for less distractions. But one great distraction on this is the Harman Kardon stereo system. That alone is reason to buy this vehicle because it is really, really nice. And on something so inexpensive, it's actually a really cool stereo system. A big plus for the Telluride. Shift Smooth, uh, this is a Kia sourced eight speed automatic transmission. One of the reasons it gets nice gas mileage. But I mentioned how the horsepower, 291 horsepower and even less than that in foot pounds of torque might ultimately be a good thing. If this is a vehicle that you're thinking about keeping for 10 years, and everybody says the same thing, no one keeps a Kia for 10 years, this might be one you might actually consider keeping for 10 years. The reason is it doesn't have like artificially high horsepower because they know it's not gonna last a long time. It actually has downscaled horsepower because they want it to last a long time. It doesn't have eye-popping colors of the interior to get you by it and take it home and then it, the colors all wear thin pretty soon. It's actually designed so that if this is something that you want to keep 10 years, 15 years, like a Toyota Land Cruiser might be, well, this is something that could definitely get the job done. Fit and finish is really, really good. It doesn't feel like 
you don't feel that massive rush of power when you lay down the gas pedal. You don't feel that V8 low end torque that this thing pulls like a, a locomotive because it doesn't pull like a locomotive. It's just fine. The performance is adequate, if not good. But handling, again, it doesn't have a big engine, so handling is quite nice for such a big vehicle. It's actually pretty light on its feet. Heads up display, that's a pretty cool feature. Going over bumps, it does it very, very smoothly. Eight inches of clearance, that's pretty good. Everything about it is actually pretty good. This is not a pretender. Let me uh, make this point clear. This is a serious rival to serious sport utilities. I'm the first to admit, when I first saw these, I thought they were personally not that great. I thought these were gonna be flimsy and phony and not the real deal. Kia's effort to go after the big boys in the segment, I knew for sure was gonna fall flat on its face. And I was completely wrong. I have a couple of coworkers who've owned these for about a year or so, and both of them say the same thing. It's not just the smartest car purchase they've ever made, they both feel like it's one of the smartest things they've ever done because they bought it new the resale value's been quite high, and the, they feel like they got a really great value for the thing that they bought. Plus, it's cool. It feels great to be seen in. It feels great to drive, and it does everything that you need it to do. Now, does that mean you should buy one new, or you should buy one pre-owned? Well, this one's priced very similarly uh, to how a one-year newer, brand-new base model would be priced. However, this has every single option in the world. Now, if you're keeping a car for two or three years, that one year discrepancy might make a difference. However, if you're gonna keep this for 10 or 15 years, and for the same money, you can get all the features to make that 10 or 15 year journey a more enjoyable journey, well, I say go for the one that's one year old because this has it all. Air conditioned seats, front and middle row. It's got the Alcantara headliner. It's got every single modern, cool, nice thing that you want. Great stereo system, that makes it very livable day to day. Tons of headroom, tons of space, everything about it. It's just, it's a dynamite, dynamite, dynamite car. And not only would I say that it's Motor Trend's Sport Utility of the Year new, I think it's the single best value on the pre-owned market for any sport utility that money can buy, period. In fact, it's not even close. My current runner-up would be the Honda Pilot, which I love. It's the greatest thing in the world, if it weren't for this. This is like an adult version of the Honda Pilot, a gourmet version of the Honda Pilot. It does everything that the Honda Pilot does. It just does it in a chunkier and more substantial way. If you buy a new Kia Telluride, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna be very, very pleased with your purchase. If you buy one that's just a tiny bit uh, used with some low miles and all the features and save some money, I'm here to tell you, you're gonna be absolutely tickled pink and thrilled at what a smart choice you've made. If you have any questions at all about this particular 2020 Kia Telluride, don't hesitate to reach out to my friends at BMW of Hawaii. And if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to reach out to joelovesawaii at gmail.com.